has God ever talked to you or anybody you know of? Not that I know of, no. Have you ever asked him? Probably not. <laughs> no. <laughs> Have you ever asked him? I always ask my God questions, but like I don't think like he directly answered me. Yes. Had lots of miracles in my life. I figure for my personal opinion, if I have to ask him something, I'm doing it wrong because I've obviously haven't followed the path set out for me. Well, there are some different perspectives. What do you think? Uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good starting point. You know, if you're not sure if God speaks, have you asked him? <laughs> I think it's maybe a good start, a good, good place to start is to ask God to, to speak, right? Uh, although sometimes he'll speak to you even if you don't ask, as in your case, right? Well, God is alive and mm -hmm. he decides to speak. He speaks to everyone, but they have to open their ear, their spiritual ear. Yeah. And uh, as we have seen now, these people who are young people yeah. who actually are very surprised because they've never heard. I was one of them. Mm -hmm. I've never how, heard how old it. Were you? I was 43. Yeah, okay, I, yeah, yeah. I never heard before in my life that God speaks in our times and in this way. First of all, because I was not going to the church and I never knew anything about the church and that God actually can speak in our times and it's called locution. And, uh, and he speaks in various ways to various people. Okay. And then I had a hard time to believe on my own thing. You, you had a little trouble believing, is this really God? Because why yeah. would he speak to me, right? When it was happening, I believed because it was happening. But then when I was going around with my friends, I said to myself when I was going around with my friends, no, there must be an explanation. But I never found it. And I only knew one thing, that I was learning directly from God's mouth a lot of things, spiritual mm -hmm. matters, and explaining to me the scriptures. So right. who could so do again, that? So again, so that, that, that voice you're hearing is steering you to the scriptures as right. well, which is a back Many and parts thing. of the scriptures, I never worked without receiving the message without the scriptures next to me, because that's what the Lord said to me. Have the scriptures yeah. next to you, yeah. because I'll co quote one or two passages from the scriptures which are integrated into the message. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's a good safety place to be, isn't it? Um, all right, let's go to some phone calls here for Vasula Rudin. Uh, Pat from Alberta, you're first. Hi. Hello? Yeah. Um, I have no problem believing that God speaks to us today. Okay. And any Christian who says they don't believe it, then I wonder if they are a Christian. Uh, you know and what, I, I honestly believe there are uh, a lot of Christians who, who do not believe that God speaks, uh, in their traditions, they, they believe that God doesn't speak outside of directly through his word. You well, know, and I think they're still I, I Christians, but... I wonder about but, their personal relationship with him then, but uh, yeah. that's what I think. Yeah. And as far as your guess goes, I don't know what to think there. I mean, I would definitely like to get a closer look. Okay. I mean, I don't know what kind of a personal life she has. Uh huh. And there's, you know, unfortunately, I because she's a woman too, that makes me a lot leerier. It's just because of what I've seen, you know. So. Okay. I don't know uh, could I you could you explain her. that, Pat? I'm not quite sure what you mean. Uh, well, I mean. I mean, myself, you know, there's so much feminism in the church and the, the women that I've come across in mm -hmm. the church, you know, mm -hmm. they've got a lot of issues and stuff. I mean, there are mighty women of God, no mm -hmm. doubt about it, but mm -hmm. I mean, that's my personal opinion because she's a woman that makes me more leery and I'm going to have to listen more to her. And like I said, I'd have to get a closer okay. look. So I don't know what I think yeah. of her. All right. Her. So sure. So Pat, no, I appreciate God your honesty. You're, 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 you're saying you've got some doubts and uh, let's let uh, Vasula respond to that. Go ahead. Well, uh, I don't think God makes any difference between women and men, not at all. And uh, uh, he spoke to many women before. And uh, we know that uh, St. Catherine of Siena had the revelation from the Father and other women as well. It doesn't matter for God, right. man I, I, I or woman. I think maybe what she's saying is perhaps the authority structure within the church, for example, the Catholic Church, and I'm not sure if the Greek, the Greek Orthodox is exactly like that, but where, you know, only male priests are allowed and, uh, uh, for example, you know, do not permit a, you know, a woman, you know, or to, uh, you know, to have authority over a man. Those kinds of scriptures come to mind, yes, you know. Yes. Maybe that's what she's getting at. And, uh, yeah, I would say that in the Orthodox Church, uh, they have a problem, a lot of them, mm -hmm. because some of them accept it as, as I am, like that. But a lot of them would have a problem because I am a woman, mm -hmm. because I'm, I am preaching, because I am witnessing with the experiences that I had with God. Mm -hmm. And if I had any experiences, and I, I think that it is to pass it on, to pass it on to people so that they know mm -hmm. God more. Mm -hmm. And I don't, can't believe that any Christian never had any experience with God. Yeah, like, I mean, I understand. I think, I think we maybe label it differently. 
But God clearly speaks to every Christian. To every he? Christian, he would give signs, yeah. but it depends if you just, pa if the grace passes by you and you don't accept it and you don't recognize it. Mm -hmm. But God will look to at everybody and will mm -hmm. give graces to everybody. He yeah. won't make any difference. You know, the funny thing is uh, a couple of angles on this, on this, on the, on the woman issue there, and I don't want to make that the main issue today. Uh, the funny thing is, you know, uh, the first, uh, that the Jesus appeared to were, were women, you know, and I find that women tend to be actually more sensitive to the spirit, generally speaking, than, than men are. So we're a little bit more stubborn, uh, generally speaking. On the other hand, uh, there is a you know, scripture to back up church structure uh, as well, and that's a whole other issue. Uh, uh, again, we won't make that the focus today, uh, where, where it's, you know, the biblical precedent is that, that men tend to be more uh, in, in places of authority, biblically speaking, but we'll leave it there. Uh, thanks for that, Pat. Uh, Richard from Ontario. Uh, hi. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Hi, I'm uh, 51 years old, and I've been a Christian for about 25 years, and God started speaking to me three years even before I became a Christian, and uh, the problem with that is you think that's normal, and uh, my parents came to the Lord a couple of years later, and my mother had uh, the gift of prophecy. Uh -huh. and that was even better than what I had because God talks to me on a daily basis, but I don't know what's in my future. But my mother would tell me all these things that God had for me, uh -huh. and I understand why Paul said that was his favorite gift. So if he would uh, say, for example, he didn't know whether he was going to die in Jerusalem, Jesus would tell him he's not going to die there, he would go on to Rome. Gives, so gives he knew hope, when he it? was yes. <laughs> arrested, he wasn't going to die. When he was in the boat, he wasn't going to die. When the okay. uh, snake bit him, he wasn't going to die. Yeah. But after that, he okay. didn't know. So he said, in that position, if God doesn't tell you your future, be prepared to die or be okay. prepared yeah. to live. Yeah. Yeah, well, th thanks for that. Uh, it's interesting, Vistula, even yeah. to hear that God speaks to people before the Christians, right? Well, uh, I'm happy that Richard at least uh, has an experience and, we, mm -hmm. and with his mother. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there are a lot of people like Richard like that with experiences of that sort. Of course, there are those that we have seen in the street being interviewed that they never met God mm -hmm. in, a, in a, a personal relation. Mm -hmm. And it's never too late. God might appear to them today, tomorrow, next year. And they will have also an experience mm -hmm. like this because the Holy Spirit in our times is acting very powerfully, ne like never before in history. Well, you, you have some interesting experiences because you do travel the world. Um, and I know you were, you, were, you were telling me about a time in Pakistan, for example, too, where you were even invited by some Muslim clerics to uh, come and meet with them and to speak. And, uh, uh, and you did, you know. I mean, so w what were those experiences like? Uh, uh, what is God saying to the Muslim people? Um, are some of them converting? Um, you know, on the other hand, even if they don't convert, what is our role to play? Mm. It was um, in Bangladesh mm -hmm. <coughs> that uh, these people had invited me. And uh, also in Pakistan, w the choir that was in the meeting that I was having mm -hmm. was all Muslim. So <laughs> <laughs> well, all Muslim choir. <laughs> they were there, they, all they, the Muslim people. They probably people. sang well. <laughs> they sang very well, yes, <laughs> Christian, Christian songs. Um, okay. I was invited by an imam in uh, Bangladesh and uh, under the name of true life in God, which is the mm -hmm. messages yep. themselves. And as they are Muslims there, majority, 90% of Muslims, there were a lot of Muslims since it was the imam who put up that meeting. But there were also the Christians there, the priests, uh, the Catholic priests, mm -hmm. there's one church there, mm -hmm. uh, Catholic priests, there were also um, some Buddhists and Hindus in that meeting but it was promoted by the Imam. Mm -hmm. And I never changed my uh, witnessing to switch it into something else. I spoke and said, Jesus tells us this and Jesus mm -hmm. tells us that. Mm -hmm. But I did respect their, their, their sure. faith. Sure. And that is what Jesus is asking us. For instance, for the Muslims, I took the, the Quran, their Quran, and I speak Arabic, and I read their mm -hmm. first uh, okay. uh, prayer to them, which mm -hmm. is praising God, mm -hmm. which is all right yeah. for Christians as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. and, I, and they were astounded. But then I took the scriptures, the Bible, which was the same size as the Quran, sure. and I read out to them and I said, Jesus tells us this for all of us. Mm -hmm. And they were listening. And I, was, I, I read out the Beatitudes to them, and they loved it.
mm. and so then this is how I s and I and they befriended me very much mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I go around witnessing in that way so the key is to respect those people rather respect. than beating them over the head with the Bible you're coming on their level no, and saying and we respect you know the, the the truth that God has given you because God in fact has given amounts of truth to other religions as well uh, you can well, see I that, say but, I respect um, you as people that's right people yes I don't mention anything more than the people. I respect you as a person. You are my brother. You are mm -hmm, my sister. Mm -hmm. But I would like you to respect us as well and mm -hmm. do what we believe. Mm -hmm. See? Because I stick to the faith I have, which is yeah. the scriptures, the Bible. Absolutely. And the scriptures will not return void. They will accomplish something, right? Well, leave this to God to do the rest. Yes. I do. He says, do your best, okay. and I'll do the rest. That's good. Thanks for that, Vasula. All right, what do you think so far? one 816 <coughs> Thanks for the call, Richard. Uh, Fran from Ontario. Hi, Fran. Hi. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to tell you that I admire your guest very much and okay. her spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, God does speak to everybody today, um, all those who are listening. One of the first uh, women who was spoken to was the Blessed Virgin Mary, and she listened to God's message through yes. the angel Gabriel. That would have been a hard message to receive, I think, for young Mary. You think about that, you know. You're oh, going yes. to bear, oh, you know, the Son of God. Hello? Me? Really? Uh, you know? Um. <laughs> exactly. And um, we're just so blessed and so lucky that she did speak to us. Um, and the Holy Spirit is very alive today, and he is allowing us to hear the messages from many visionaries. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, as well, the messages are being allowed uh, to be heard, especially the world who does not hear Jesus, because they do not pray, and uh, they do not have a relationship with Jesus. So blessings to you both. Thanks for that, friend. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah. Uh, Canada does need to return to prayer. Uh, I'm convicted of that myself. You know, I need to pray more. We want to see God move. And when we read about revivals that do happen where, you know, God moves sovereignly and changes nations, changes hearts, it's, it's undermined, it's, it's, it's undergirded prayer. by prayer, isn't it? Prayer is important because in the very beginning when, the, when Christ was coming to teach me every single day, as I said to you, I never had any catechism, so I was missing a lot. Mm -hmm. He asked for prayers. Now, prayers of the heart are very powerful, he said, because they are coming with truthfulness from the heart. So it is uh, not read, but it is speaking to God, and that's where you can reach God, by, through prayer. But then he asked one day, and that was, I don't know how I understood it, but uh, I said to him when he asked me that, Christ, I think you're asking something of me that I cannot do. Hmm. And that was, he asked me to pray without ceasing. Yeah, oh yeah, explain that one, right? Yeah. Remember, I told you yeah. that last time, praying mm -hmm. without ceasing. And I said, but Christ, I cannot do that. I'm a housewife. I have mm -hmm. to take care of my mm -hmm. other things, mm -hmm. too. I mm -hmm. can be with Christ a lot yeah. by yeah. prayer, but not without ceasing. And he said, Vasula, you have not understood. To pray without ceasing does not mean that I want you 24 hours a day on your knee. But it is a prayer which is a silent prayer, contemplative. Yes. It is uh, the heart speaking to me. It's when, you're des when your heart desires me, your God, all day long and you're thirsts always, for me. Always seeking God's will. Seeking God all around, mm -hmm. thirsting for God, longing mm -hmm. for God, mm -hmm. and being living perpetually in God, and He yeah. living perpetually yeah. in you, and being aware of His uh, presence around you. He's there. He's never away. No, uh, well said. I, I think that is very true. That's where we need and to be. And to arrive at. to that point yeah. where you thirst for God, mm -hmm. One has to go through repentance to obtain the Holy Spirit who can give you the gift of love. Okay, it's a humility, it's a humble attitude. Humble attitude. Okay, all right, sobering words, but I think they're true. Uh, let's go to Pat from Quebec. Hi, Pat, thanks for waiting. Hello. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so thankful you're on the program, Vasula. I've been watching and uh, checking out your, your agenda. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I haven't found you anywhere in Quebec. Oh, she was in Montreal, I think, right? Yes. When? Yeah, that's too bad you missed that one. It's, uh, it was, it's already passed, Pat. Oh, well, maybe you'll come back again, and I won't miss it this time. Mm -hmm. Vassal, I would like to ask you, um, we, we, we have a real problem here in Canada with the legislation of gay marriage. I know we are to love the sinner and hate the sin, and, and this is something the Lord has put on my heart because of people that I know. And I would like to know if you have any prophetic speakings concerning what may be coming up or how we should in fact deal with this problem 
And it is a problem because okay. we are sending out a terribly wrong message to the right. Right. So you're talking about the same-sex marriage, which has been legalized in Canada. Yes. And as a result, it's affected a number of things, including our school system, what our kids are I'm now being taught. I'm more concerned so, about the school system than anything else, but I would like to know if she has a word on that. Sure. Is God saying anything specifically to Canada? Yes. What's the What does the future hold? Will we return to traditional marriage? Um, any about gay that? marriage, this yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that contradicts the scriptures, mm -hmm. and as if we are Christians and we follow the scriptures, yep. every word of it, then how is it that we bleep over the chapter in Romans one? Yeah, I know. <laughs> and we have to open your Bibles, read what the Lord says about this matter through the scriptures, and you'll understand. But it's not just there. It's also in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. It's even harder in yeah. the Old Testament because, yeah. you know, I don't want to say the words. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty strict uh, regulations, uh, strict. consequences for that. And I but do believe in what God says. I don't want to say I am going to befriend and change my faith because there is this. I love the people, but not their sin. That's right. Yeah, so you're, you're, <clears throat> you're with the, for example, I mean,